Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this motherboard from ECS. This is the ECS Golden Board, the Z77H2-AX. Now my first question when presented with this board was, is, is this board made of gold? That seems expensive. That's possible I suppose, but actually ECS has been kind enough on this inside flap to indicate uh, what is gold in, in, as far as the motherboard goes, and what is not. So uh, here's gold plating, so all this stuff has gold plating, including the uh, CPU socket right there, LG1155 socket. Uh, the USB 3.0 ports, actually a lot of the shielding on a lot of the I.O. on the back is gold plated. Golden LAN ports, Bluetooth dongles, VGA and HDMI connectors, audio connectors. Also the I.O. shield on the back, also gold plated wireless dongle. Uh, down here at the bottom we have gold forever which is just indicating some of the uh, gold that they're indicating as far as the componentry and the quality so uh, they've actually used uh, 15 micron gold plating on the pins in the CPU socket that does actually help uh, with stability uh, long-term uh, overclocking or so I am told. Uh, also golden cooling uh, referring to the golden elements of the actual uh, heat sinks on the, P on the PCB uh, attached to uh, important stuff like the power delivery. Golden Royalty, which I assume is they're just complimenting me there. Thank you, ECS. Golden Stability, uh, Anti-Rust. So here's, here's some actually good qualities of gold and, uh, and a good reason to have it. Other than just saying my motherboard is made of gold, uh, you get stuff like anti-oxidation, anti-rust, anti-moisture, -moist um, which is uh, one of the uh, qualities of gold that makes it a sought-after metal. Um, also the golden color of some of the components. So gold solid caps, uh, gold heat sinks, and uh, also the chokes are also coated with gold color, although not necessarily gold plating like the rest of the components here. Uh, some other just sort of base level specs of this board, uh, of course Z77 is a, the Z77 chipset from Intel. It supports Intel uh, second and third generation core processors, so that's Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge. They've indicated here that they've tested uh, OC speeds of up to 2800 plus on the memory, so DDR3, uh, you get really good memory overclocking. That's particularly if, if you're using a Z77 chipset because those have really solid IMCs and you can get really high memory overclocks if you're using some high quality memory. Uh, this board does support two-way or three-way SLI and Crossfire X. Uh, SLI is one of the key features there because they have included a PLX chip in here for extra PCI Express lanes. Uh, of course, AMD's uh, Crossfire X is well supported. Uh, compatible with Windows 7, some software that's included, uh, Norton, uh, Cyberlink Media Suite, Musee. You also get Virtue MVP, uh, so that's a really handy software for switching back and forth between the iGPU and uh, your discrete graphics. Uh, you can use GPU switching. There's a lot of different modes you can do that with. Uh, it's there for versatility, and you can also use it to boost your frame rates in certain games that support it, so that's pretty cool. Uh, some more information here on the box about the gaming experience, so then just more information about uh, SLI Crossfire X optimi optimization. PCI Express Gen 3, again, you only get Gen 3 if you're going with an Ivy Bridge processor, not Sandy Bridge, so bear that in mind. But they do have a Gen 3 switch on the board, so that's a PLX PEX8747. That's a popular uh, PCI Express Gen 3 switch, and that is adding more PCI Express lanes on top of the 16 lanes you get natively uh, in your Ivy Bridge processor and that will enable uh, or allow you to use uh, three-way SLI support because NVIDIA will not let you run three-way SLI unless you have 8x at least on all three uh, of your PCI Express connectors. Anyway, uh, moving on, switchable graphics, some more information there about Virtue MVP if you're interested in reading. Uh, some more stuff about the stability, high quality components of course, uh, intelligent utility, so you get the intelligent easy utility, the GUI, UEFI BIOS, so they actually have a graphical layout in the BIOS here. Multi-language multi BIOS, so if you're not a native English speaker, that uh, will definitely help you out. Some more information over here. Uh, wireless LAN connectivity, so you get uh, WLAN, uh, Bluetooth connection, Gigabit LAN also, of course, integrated. 8-channel uh, HD audio, and that's about it for the retail box. Let's take a look at accessories next. Next for a look inside the inner box, which is black. I'm kind of disappointed, but oh well. Uh, we have the motherboard itself, of course, which I will be coming back to. We also have this box, which has all the accessories. So let's take a look at those, starting with serial ATA cables. Uh, we have a total of six serial ATA cables. Uh, looks like these are SATA Rev 3. These are, well, all of these will work for SATA Rev 3. It's really rare that you actually have a any serial ATA cable that won't work for Rev 3. But that being said, uh, you have 
four black cables right here. They're all straight plugs, they all have clasps. And then you have two red cables, uh, also straight plugs with clasps, so six of those total. You also get, ooh, fun stuff here. Oh, you get a bunch of protective caps for your I.O. on the back. It's kind of nice. Protect your I.O. That's not in use. There's that gold-plated input-output shield for the back of your case. And uh, I'm really, I need to find a golden case that will match with this board perfectly. I'm sure there's one out there. Uh, you also get a variety of SLI bridges. These look to all be the same and the same length. I couldn't even be sure if they uh, actually included more than what was necessary for in here or if I just got lucky, but there you have it. Three uh, SLI ribbon cables like that. Those look like they would all reach over, yeah, four four PCI Express uh, slots down, so you can have a variety of graphics card configurations with those. Uh, this appears to be an external uh, antenna for your wireless. This is a certificate of quality. This is, a, oh look, they're even numbered. I have board number 13 of 200. That's kind of nice. I got the signature of the ECS GM on there and a little certificate for the board. What else is in here? There is more stuff. All right, documentation, which is right here. So this appears to be more of like a poster size, full color, uh, expandable thing. Uh, this looks to be maybe more on the generic side. Yes, it is. Uh, just as far as general computer connections go. So uh, you've got some stuff there about different parts. You've got some useful info here in the back about your pinouts and, and whatnot, so you can keep this on hand while you're doing your build, and I will awkwardly fold it back up. There we go. We have the Virtue MVP user manual, so if you're not familiar with that, you can check that out. Uh, if you are not haven't used Virtue MVP before, oh, hey, there we go. Uh, we also have this driver disk right there, so uh, that will install your drivers for you. You should have to head over to the ECS website to download the latest versions of these drivers, uh, which are definitely going to be newer than the ones on the disk. Also, you get your user's guide here for the Z77H2AX. So this one has more specific information for this board, such as the layout, all the components that are installed. I'll be going over those in just a moment. This is the last of the accessories, which is a front panel USB 3.0 adapter, which is a very handy little add-on if you've included a PCI bracket. So that'll give you a couple USB 3.0 ports on the front of your case in a 3.5 inch bay. Also includes uh, the 20 pin uh, internal motherboard connector for USB 3.0. Some bolts to connect that and attach it to the uh, cage. You also have a PCI bracket right there. So if you don't want to use this on the front of your case, you can use it on the back. Now we'll take a closer look at the motherboard. I'm going to start off by showing you guys the back, just so you can see the PCB. It is a glossy black PCB. Also, you notice the back panel of the 1155 socket right there, the uh, support socket, which is one of the many gold-plated components on the board. And here you can see all the rest of the gold and gold-plated components on the board. So um, it should go without saying the color scheme on this board is gold with uh, black. It is a black extreme golden board, which hence you have this color scheme. Uh, I'm going to first point out the fan headers on the board. You have three total. You get a four pin CPU fan header, which is up here right by the CPU socket. Uh, a couple more three pin fan headers, so one here on the upper right of the board, one more down here on the bottom middle. Those are your fan headers. Uh, now we're going to go and take a look at all the detailed components of the board. I'm going to start way down here in the bottom right. Of course, you have front panel connectors, so that's where you wire up your front panel for your uh, power, uh, hard drive, LED, um, all those types of things. Plug them in right there. And you'll notice right above that you actually have an MSATA connector. So you can use a small MSATA SSD, uh, plug it in right there. Uh, what this is going to do is actually going to uh, take up one of your SATA Rev 2, uh, 3 gigabit per second ports um, from your uh, Z77 control right there. Um, but it is great because you can use that uh, to run an operating system off of. Uh, if you happen to get a smaller capacity one, you can also use it for SSD caching. Um, which is a great feature of the Z77 chipset, so handy to have that built into the board. Uh, down here at the bottom, you have your USB 3.0 front panel connector, so you can use that with that included adapter. Moving over to the left, we have another uh, USB 2.0 connector right there for um, a couple USB 2.0 ports. Uh, we have a debug header right there, 
uh, system fan header that I already mentioned earlier. Uh, we have a comm header right there, SPDIF for your audio, and then finally on the left side you have your front panel audio header, so you can plug that in to enable your front panel mic and headphone jacks. Uh, next to that you'll see the old chip right there, and that is your Realtek ALC892 codec audio chip, and that is controlling the audio ports on the board. Uh, the I.O. for that is on the back, which we'll come back to in just a few moments. Uh, your PCI Express ports are all right here. You have a nice variety of them. A couple PCI Express uh, 1X uh, right here at the top. Then you have one, two, three PCI Express 16X full-length slots. Those are where you're going to be plugging in video cards, uh, assuming that you're going to be plugging in video cards into this board. Uh, we'll come back to those in a sec, but I did want to mention you have a couple legacy PCI slots as well in between those. Uh, now, again, I should come back to the uh, variety of implementations of the PCI Express here. So bear in mind, if you're going to be using a Sandy Bridge processor for your socket up there, uh, that these will default to PCI Express Gen 2 which essentially gives you less bandwidth, but it's really hard to saturate the bandwidth even with PCI Express Gen 2 right now. So uh, if you do use an Ivy Bridge processor, which is going to be a more ideal setup for this board since Z77, which released with the launch of Ivy Bridge, uh, that will give you PCI Express Gen 3. Um, and then also another feature that they've added, which is uh, kind of labeled right there, you can see PEX8747, and that's indicating that they've added a PLX uh, PCI Express Gen 3 switch on the board, and that's giving you more PCI Express lanes. Uh, a Ivy Bridge processor by default will give you 16, and then the PEX chip can effectively double that, but uh, essentially what you can get as far as your video card connections is you can have a single 16X at the top, you can have 16X and 16X, or you can have 16, 8, and 8 for your uh, three-way Crossfire X or SLI solutions. That's going to give you all the bandwidth you need uh, for multi-video card solutions. Also wanted to point out you have triple slot spacing between these top two ports and then uh, double, double slot spacing between the lower two. So bear that in mind. Moving on to the right side, we have a, a heat sink, uh, which again, gold, uh, with the black extreme logoing on it. That is right above the Z77 chipset as well as that PEX chip that I mentioned. Uh, it's also got a heat pipe, which is extending up into this uh, uh, little heat assembly right there. So it's going to help keep the heat from that dispersed a little bit better. Uh, I wanted to mention that the Z77 chipset controls a lot of stuff on the board, but it uh, does can have a PCH built in that controls your serial ATA ports right there. Also wanted to point out this isn't related to the chipset, but there is a debug LED right next to that, so you can use that to help get your system up and running. You can reference codes on the debug LED to uh, see if your computer's hanging on any particular piece of hardware. And then if you're not uh, getting through your post, uh, you can reference that and help to troubleshoot. So taking a look at the serial ATA ports here on the side of the board, uh, I just wanted to clarify what's what because uh, you do have some control by the Z77 chipset right there. You also have a few more controlled by Asmedia controllers. So uh, first off, the two on the far right here are controlled by an Asmedia controller. So they're SATA Rev 3, 6 gigabit per second. There's another Asmedia controller that controls a couple eSATA ports that are over on the back I.O., so I'll show you guys that when I get to the back. Uh, the rest of the ports here are controlled by the Z77 chipset, so you got a couple more SATA Rev 3, 6 gigabit per second ports right there. These are going to be the fastest ports, uh, so if you do have like an SSD you're going to use for a boot drive, recommended to plug that in right there. Uh, you also get a couple more uh, SATA Rev 2, 3 gigabit per second ports right there, and then your last SATA Rev 2 uh, connector is actually routed to your MSATA plug right there. So um, you do have a dedicated MSATA connector right there, and uh, apparently ECS has left off the sixth SATA connector um, that's available from the Z77 chipset, but they've replaced it with SATA Rev3 right there from Asmedia, so you get more SATA 6G. Above that, you have a couple surface mounted power and reset buttons, so very handy if you're going to be doing an outside of the box build. I've also done a surface mounted speaker right there so you can listen to your postcodes if you like hearing that satisfactory beep after you've put your computer get together for the first time. Moving up the right side of the board, we have a 24 pin main power connector, so route that over from your power supply. There's the aforementioned three pin uh, fan connector for a chassis fan. Next to that, you have your DDR3 DIMM slots. You'll notice there are four of them. Uh, this board supports, of course, dual channel memory and uh, can supports DIMM configurations of up to 8 gigabytes per DIMM. So 8 times 4, that gives you up to 32 gigabytes total. Uh, you, do, you will want to install your memory in uh, sets of 2 to, ma to make sure you uh, take advantage of that dual channel capability. And uh, Motherboard Manual has all the information for how to correctly plug those in to make sure you're um, connecting them to the right 
slots. Uh, also, the DDR3 does support overclock speeds. So, uh, with an Ivy Bridge processor, Intel officially supports overclock speeds up to 1600. Uh, and then, uh, as men mentioned on the retail box earlier, uh, ECS has tested configurations with this board that have uh, surpassed 2600 uh, speed on the memory, which is pretty impressive. Uh, next to that, of course, you have your LGA 1155 socket for your Intel second or third gen core processor. Again, you can see more of the gold plating on the socket throughout, so um, I'm assuming if you're purchasing this board that you're really into gold because there's lots of gold on the board, including your heat sinks again. Uh, surrounding the uh, CPU socket, uh, this is where your power delivery is, so you got a nice beefy heat sink on that. Heat pipe running between it to make sure that you get adequate heat dissipation. Uh, and as the VRMs on that heat up, that's going to help keep them cooler, uh, which is going to lead to uh, better overclocks as well as uh, better efficiency, as well as a uh, longer lifespan of the componentry on the board in general. Also next to that, of course, you have your 8-pin supplemental CPU power connector. I will now close off with the inputs and outputs. So uh, there's all your I.O. on the back. Again, as you will note, gold-plated shielding for all of those connectors. Uh, over here on the left side, these red ports here are USB 2.0. Uh, they have three times the amperage going out of them, so that's going to help to uh, charge your devices, uh, such as your phone, cell phone, any USB charging device out of that will charge much faster due to the increased power output. Uh, there's your Bluetooth wireless, uh, wireless connector right there. Uh, you have a rear panel eSATA, actually a couple of those. You have a surface mounted or external clear CMOS button. Uh, so you can easily clear your CMOS without having to open up and get inside your computer case. Uh, you have some video outs over here, and that is for the iGPU and your Sandy Bridge or IV Bridge processor. So you get an HDMI out as well as a 15-pin D-sub uh, analog VGA out. Uh, here's your Wi-Fi wi module. You also have a couple more USB 2.0 ports there, the other eSATA port, four USB 3.0 ports, uh, gigabit Ethernet from Broadcom, and then uh, your 8-channel uh, analog audio outs right there, as well as mic input and a Toslink optical SPDIF out. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the ECS Black Extreme Golden Board Model Z77H2-AX. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and of course, don't forget to subscribe while you're there. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.